everybody in Nigeria would at least have free primary education. Yes. You because you would see that that's what the children need. Mm -hmm. You that like I was saying before, the children are future until it's time for you to give them the resources to actually let them make a change. Yes. <laughs> you're letting you're like you are the future. You are the change. Gen Z, stand up and do what? <laughs> <laughs> and do what? Yeah, what? Yeah. Like. Everybody in Nigeria would at least have free primary education. Yes. You because you would see that that's what the children need. Mm -hmm. You would that like I was saying before, the children are future until it's time for you to give them the resources to actually let them make a change. Yes. <laughs> you're letting you're like you are the future. You are the change. Gen Z, stand up and do what? <laughs> <laughs> and do. <laughs> Many young people may feel like they are too small or insignificant to make a change or make a difference in the world. They may feel like the political system is rigged or their voices don't matter and you can't really blame them. Nigeria is blessed with many young people who are passionate about making a difference in the world. However, the situation of things in a country like Nigeria has stifled that dream and pushed many to a state of apathy and disengagement. Now, while we know that national affairs can be complex and confusing, and it can be difficult for young people to understand the nuances of the issues, technology has and continues to bridge a huge part of the problem, which is ignorance. Nonetheless, it is important that more young people start to pay attention to the governing of their affairs. And tonight we're asking, how can we get young people interested in national affairs? Please let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081-8038-4663. Tweet at us at WishyoAfrica1 with, wish, with the hashtag Wisho. Ladies. <laughs> You know, I, 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 I listened in on the team's takeover yes, and honestly, I was, I was proud. It was so good. I, I was like, oh, wow. Are these, is this, I mean, I, I, you know how people have been talking about the Gen Z's, the Gen mm -hmm. Z's, oh, they're these, mm -hmm. they're that. I've, I've, in as much as I, I kind of like understand, but I've never really bought into that school of thoughts, yeah. right? Because listening to them speak, the mm -hmm. past few days, I, I was like, wow, I'm motivated, yeah. right? Yeah. There was, I had to even call my brother, like, you, come, come, come. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't tell me you're one of those people. No, no I said, pressure. No, no, no. So I, 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 I called him because I wanted to hear his opinion mm -hmm. on something. And mm -hmm. I was impressed as well. Because to me, seeing them doing something like this, you can tell that these are bright minds. Yeah. These are people that have a future a bright future mm -hmm. ahead of them and they are ready to take the bulls by the horn like it is really really exciting yeah and i'll say if given the chance if well if i if, agree if given I the agree. chance but there I is agree. just something i noticed about them it's yeah. and it kind of reminded me of myself when i was younger it's just that that belief that you can take the bull by the horn. Yeah. Yeah. But I think eventually getting older, there's just something about the society that cripples that and makes you more, maybe not afraid, but I'm not sure of the better word to use, a bit more reserved and, mm. you know. But yeah, I definitely enjoyed, I didn't watch all the episodes, I watched a couple of them and I think it was two episodes and it was just amazing. I love how they handled the Japa syndrome and yeah. you know what, I really have to give what credit. Oa mm. is like the creator of this show. Yeah. And like, <laughs> she is the brain behind that team takeover and I think it's the first time we're getting such done on national TV where it's just young people, Gen Z, everybody's scared of Gen Z. Yeah. So you it, it will take a lot of guts to put Gen Z on, on TV. TV. TV alone. Yeah. There is no adult monitoring them or saying, no, don't say this, no, don't say this. It was just them. And that took a yeah. lot of guts. So big up Oa, big up ways. <laughs> now talking about talking about um, national affairs, yeah. basically politics and the current state of the of the country and mm -hmm. the economy, right? I know growing up uh, our parents would tell us, oh, you need to read newspaper, you need to watch news. And a lot of us didn't really want to do any of that because, mm -hmm. I mean, we also felt like it wasn't our business, right? It wasn't our concern. We had parents who were looking after us. And if anything was happening in the country, our parents were there, were there to, to, shield, to shield us, right? Yeah. But then that's just my own side and how um, my own upbringing, rather. Mm. But how, how was it like for you? Did you have access to to information, to know what is happening in the country, what had happened in the past, what history was like? Um, actually, no, because I think by the time I got into school, they had wiped history, so it was just government that we had. And mm. government, most of the history was not exactly 
age, you know, when they give you textbooks, they filter the history. They make it such that everything looks rosy and all whatnot. So, um, yeah, I think my childhood, it was just TV. You watch, um, I think Minaj watched the cartoons, then go for Bible study. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty much it. We didn't have that much room to It was much later in my late teens that, you know, I was exposed to radio. Yeah. You know, then I could tell my, my parents could take decisions. And I'm like, you know, I'm not, I'm not about to do this. I had just graduated from secondary school and I got a phone. So now I have like some level of exposure you know, so, some level of freedom, not mm. exposure. It was the freedom that led to me getting exposure. And, and that's, that's when I became more aware of events going on in the world. Mm, interesting. Yeah. How about you, anything? <laughs> <Andy? laughs> um, so, <laughs> well, um, I think it, it's not very different because mm. we grew up around the same time. Yeah. So I would say for us then, we, were, we grew up at the time of locked TV and TV having the padlock mm. and all those things. <laughs> and then... We used to have access to it at four o'clock, just before four o'clock it opens, and then you have all the national anthem. National bah, anthem bah, 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 so bah. for us, that was, and you get to watch TV from, I think, about four o'clock, where they have the children's program to, like, I think, about six or something like that, the likes of Taste by Moonland and the rest of them. Mm -hmm. And then I think we were exposed to news, I think, about nine o'clock i think it was um sunday Ulisse on a sunday and then you had this other shows some of these interesting shows that they used to talk about different topics mm -hmm. and then you have the news so um we were exposed to as much as we were allowed to view mm -hmm. so that's that's how i'll put it we were exposed to as much as we were allowed to view and at, uh, it's not like we were exposed to like newspapers newspapers were like daddy's thing so it's yes. when my dad has finished reading maybe like a few days later you know, what we were interested in then were probably the crossword or something, some of Captain the other, Africa, some Hunger, of the other small all cartoons, cartoons and all yes. that. Those were the things we were interested in. <laughs> so the news was, the news is never really your issue at a young age. Yeah. So the kind of national affairs that we're talking about now is like the gen, uh, you know, the Gen Z teens takeover from that age at the age where you're able to make a couple of decisions. Mm -hmm. And for them, they're actually able to make decisions a bit earlier. Yeah. We couldn't make decisions until, even while you're in school, you know, the decision where <laughs> they were still deciding a whole lot of things right. for us. So it's until, even when we did have access to phones, all that did for us was exposure. Mm -hmm. So we could now view what we wanted to do, view, you know, join some of these social media, high five and the rest of yeah. them, uh, Facebook, go, my yeah. messenger, <laughs> to say hello to a friend because yeah. even the phone that you had, and then we didn't even have phones. I didn't have phones till way much later. Then we didn't have phones. Even our phones at home were like coded. So you have to know how to uncode. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and then yeah. Yeah, so you're exposed to as much as your parents allow you to view. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's how much news we had. But now, today, oh my God, the accessibility to news and information. I'll tell you what. Sorry. Wow. Sorry to cut you, but my sister's four-year-old knows how to go, turn on the TV, get to YouTube, select whatever he wants to watch, and watch it. Something you're talking about a four-year-old. I have a two-year-old cousin, um, a nephew. He would take your phone that he has never used before. All you need to do is unlock it. He knows the YouTube. He knows exactly the YouTube logo. These you kids. To tell you how smart he is, I tried once. I downloaded the kids' YouTube. Uh -huh. and he, so he said he wanted to use my phone for YouTube. So I went to the kids' one, and I opened it for him and gave it to him. He looked at it, and after a few minutes, he just zoomed it out. Like, he just went out of the page. Wow. Did my screen like this and found the right one. <laughs> just clicked it and opened it and said, put, he has minions. So he loves, uh, he, he has and Coco Melons and <laughs> they don't put it, say, put Coco Melons. <laughs> and I'm looking at him like, how did you get here? Yeah. He knows. So, and it, it, it for even when my nephews were little, they were the ones that told me, that it was from them that I knew that when you lock your iPad screen, yeah. they can still go to the pictures. So the thing about it is that right now, we have a population, I think 60% of Nigeria's population are under 25 Ooh, at this moment. So we have the youngest African population in Africa, mm -hmm. I think, or one of the youngest population in Africa. And to see that the teens can actually pull off something like this for a whole week, I was really amazed. Mm -hmm. Because for the longest time, like you rightfully said, we just take Gen Z as a bunch of internet-driven, unruly, unruly <laughs> emotion 
you know, imbalanced people. But yeah. the thing is that it's also not imp it's very important for us as individuals and as we grow yeah. not to generalize. Mm -hmm. For at least we have been able to put that to the test and they have shown us that they are capable of doing, that they are capable in terms of that they have the capacity to be able to actually think for themselves yeah. and make the right decisions if led aright. Mm -hmm. Now, I, from what, um, you know, she said, uh, Basharun said, Yasmin, yeah. Yasmin said mm -hmm. all through the week, she made a statement that you say you keep telling us to stand up and stand up, stand up for what? And that's where we've come to. Because mm -hmm. even when it's time for the youths and the teenagers to actually take over by you doing something like this, actually letting to see if all that you've been teaching them has been absorbed. You actually have to give them the opportunity to actually show what they are capable of doing. Mm -hmm. Then you know how to correct, direct, instruct, and guide them. Mm. But if we keep shushing them and shushing them and expecting their opinions not to be heard, we are still expecting them to be the leaders to be, of tomorrow yeah. because yeah. we're not going to be here forever. Mm. So if we don't give them the opportunity to actually rise to the occasion, make their own mistakes, yeah. and come to a realization that this country mm. is for us all and not just about everyone maybe jabbing and running away and mm -hmm. then coming back much later mm -hmm. you're still going to meet the same thing so if you don't walk if we all don't put hands together to walk at it now mm. you go you come back your next generations will still be here so whatever you think you're avoiding and running away from is going to be here waiting for the next couple of generations because mm -hmm. you can't live outside the country forever yeah so right and enough right enough what you just what you just said and i really yeah. love what you just said right um so i want us to link link these things together yeah we're talking about how um her four year old, you're two years old, right? They're able to go into your phone and search mm -hmm. for these things, right? Now, it, it, it shows that things are changing yeah. from when we were little kids or teenagers right. or young adults to who the Gen Z's are right now or to mm -hmm. who the young, um, I don't know what Gen they call it. Gen A. 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 <laughs> Gen A. Yeah. <laughs> who they are right now, right? Now, if you look at that two picture, what can you say is different? Right? What is causing this, this recent curiosity, this need to want to know more, to, to want to be different? I think it's partly because the world has been demystified. Mm. You know, there isn't a lot of things that are hidden or, you know, denied access or something. Like we are in a place where back in our time, you didn't even, you had to be of a certain age before you can enter the cafe. And then you need to have the money to pay for 30 minutes or yeah. one hour mm -hmm. to have access to information. <laughs> and some zones don't even have cafe at all. They don't have power, you know. But right now, that's not the case right now. Just open your phone and just get data or you don't even need data. Have Wi-Fi at home because your parents need data, mm -hmm. right? Just connect to the Wi-Fi and literally the world is one click away, you know. So I think that is one of the major changes that, you know, that happened uh, um, with Gen Z and millennials and even the Gen A that is coming after Gen Z. Um, yeah, I think I was also going to say that one of the ways that we could um, so easily get stop what happened with the millennials and the baby boomers and all what generation, one of the easiest ways to stop that is to ensure that there is a merge with Gen Z and the millennials. Mm, because yeah. if the millennials keep saying, oh, it's our turn, Emil Locan, what's that? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it is my turn. You know, if we keep going for that, then we're going to end up it's doing what the baby boomers do. We're going to push them out. And then eventually they're going to be like, you know what, I don't I don't care about what is going on here. You guys do your stuff. And maybe they end up doing the Japa syndrome, you know. So um, yeah, we definitely need a merge of both generations. Sorry, I, I like to, clear, to clear something that you said. Yeah. It's not all of us that are millennials, please. <laughs> not millennial what are you, what are you, Gen Z? No, Gen I'm a. millennial. I don't know about the person you were talking about. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but I, 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 you know, one of the ways I would say we can bridge this gap is the kind of communication. Mm -hmm. Yeah, communication is very key. Now, Gen Zs, uh, we see them and we say, or the younger generation now, we see them and we say, you know, they're always tied to their communication tools. So they're always on their phones. They're always on, their, on the internet Gadgets. looking at different things, uh, TikTok. So I think one of the ways that we can include them is to start bringing... It also depends on the mode of communication we use. Now, mm -hmm. if you know that they're always on the internet, what kind of information are we putting out on the internet? Yeah. What kind of information are the different agencies that want... That, the way you want to affect them. Like when, you, when we talk about politics now, mm. for, for example. Mm -hmm. Who are those younger people? How much inclusion... 
is there for the younger generation. When we talk about, we have youth leaders. We hardly hear about them. Yeah. Most of the time when we hear about them, they're in support of the government. What are they doing for the people? How are they bridging the gap between the younger generation and the older generation? I think that is one of the things that people like youth leaders, youth mm -hmm. advisors, when people in the youth mm. department of any organization or agency in Nigeria yeah. can Angie. actually... Okay, so just hold that thought, <laughs> right? Um, so we'll take a short break and we'll see you shortly. If you just tuned in, it's our ladies' night out and we are discussing the topic... How can we get young people interested in national affairs? Please let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081-8038-4663. Twitter us at WayShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WayShow. So ladies, um, remember mm -hmm. I mentioned that I had a conversation with my brother. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Sorry. So when I had when I saw this when I saw this topic, I called my brother because I really wanted to hear what he had to say. I mean, yeah. I have my own ideas yeah. on how we can get the young people um, interested. I mean, I'm young, so people like me too <laughs> <laughs> interested in national affairs. Yeah. And so when I asked him, right, I was like, oh, when was the first time you got really interested in politics and what's happening in this country? He said the recent election, and I was like, huh, mm. why? Mm. He said because he he saw a candidate that he believed in. He saw someone that he felt like people that he trusted were clamoring for. Mm -hmm. And based on what the person or that said candidate had said, it seemed like we had a bright future. Mm -hmm. And that was why he wanted to actually go out and vote for him. I was like, oh, okay. So how were you informed and updated about what, what's happening right now? He said, oh, that most of his, um, his updates, he got most of his news update on social media mm -hmm. and he either on Instagram or on Twitter, but he just made sure that whenever he saw something about the coming election or what was happening, even during election, he mm -hmm. made sure he listened because, like I said, he had hope. He had hope that that things were going to were going to change. Mm -hmm. So I went ahead and I asked him. I said, "Okay, okay, that's interesting, right?" But um, it has always been said that the Gen Zs are not interested in what is happening. That kind of thing. They are, they are mm -hmm. selfish lots, right? But what do you think? How do you think we can get um, young people like you more interested in national affairs, in, interested in what's happening in the country, right? To care. And mm -hmm. he said, "Oh." Just get people like me to talk about it. I'm like, okay, explain. And he says, oh, that most of us are on social media. We spend a lot of our time there. Mm -hmm. You find a lot of young, um, young adults who are already influencers and they have mm -hmm. a lot of following, yeah. right? People listen to what they say. And he said, if they, for us, it will be better if whoever is passing across that information, whoever is educating us or mm -hmm. enlightening us is of the same age group. Yeah. When you see someone, he was like, oh, when you see, so this is him speaking, when you see somebody like me speaking on national TV mm -hmm. or talking about politics or what's happening in the country, mm -hmm. I want to listen, right? Because what is going on at the back of his head or back of his mind rather is if this person can do this, what then I can't too. Mm -hmm. If this person believes that there is change, then why not? Mm -hmm. And that it will be more important for them to see things like that. I was like, okay, interesting that I should have actually sent you this team takeover that we did, <laughs> right? Because it's something that we are currently doing on ways. And yeah. it was very enlightening to actually mm. see young adults mm. speak on things like this. And I, I found that very, again, talking to him gave me some form of, form of motivation. You saw me, I don't know if you saw my comments that day when they were speaking. And I was like, ah, we <laughs> it means that we have a bright future, yeah. right? We have people who would actually who would actually stand and people who want to see change so another thing that i noticed when i was listening to one of the shows um i think it was a topic about um modeling morals uh mm -hmm. modeling moral uh, um, leaders and um is corruption born or bred and alpha had shared a story about him and his dad they were in the car they were driving and then uh, one of these law enforcement agents had to stop him stopped the car and then used his gun to 
to hit him and asked him to come down mm -hmm. from the car. So the the law enforcement agent had assumed that Alpha was a Yahoo boy based on how he was dressed. And oh. Alpha had a laptop oh. with him and he thought that his dad was his Uber Sponsor. driver. Oh. <laughs> oh, wow. Right? And he was wow. asking him, oh, what's your name? What do you do? And he goes, oh, I'm a student. Oh, what school? And he mentioned his school. And the guy's like, oh, okay, he's just making inquiries. And now, looking at it and seeing that a young man of his age mm -hmm. has experienced something like, like that, that, right? And even on that show, a lot of them spoke about the corruption in the country and things mm -hmm. they have witnessed. And honestly, I, I honestly don't blame them if they don't want to be associated with what is happening in the country. Because for them, it's like, I have a dream and mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of people, I've seen my parents' dream being bashed. Mm -hmm. I've seen people who have come out to protest and yeah. they've lost their lives. I've seen that, oh, the government has said they would do this before they got into, into the seat of power. Mm -hmm. And by the time they got there, nothing happened, nothing. right? Yeah. It's like, oh, you're looking at yourself. A lot of them want to also leave the country because they feel like if I stay here, I'm just I'm going to be the same way exactly. as the former generation. I'm going to tell you something, right? Because it's, when it's talked about like watching dreams shatter, I, I realize like personally, I've had a couple of my dreams shattered, right? Well, maybe in the future it will still pick up. But for right now, I realize that just because of the configuration of the country, there are certain dreams you cannot achieve because you're not rightly positioned mm. to achieve it. And why are you not positioned? Because your country hasn't considered the fact that these things, people need these things, so let us make these things available, right? So that's sort of like a disadvantage. And you also said something um, about value, about listening to them. And I think we are in, in the era where... Um, again, I'll go back to what baby boomers did to us because there's millennials and then our parents, baby boomers, in the era where you would have something valuable to say, but they'll be like, sit down. Aro Nikidi, how old are you? Sit down there and listen. Yeah. Do you understand? They literally like shut you down there wasn't any room for you to express yourself for you to feel like oh i'm i'm a, i'm human i mean i'm an independent person who has like a brain that functions like give me room to exercise what i've learned to school my human rights my experiences let me open up and tell you this is who i am there wasn't any room for that you know and i have to applaud millennial parents because right now we see them not replicating the same thing in yeah. in gen z and gen alpha which gives them more makes them more audacious and makes them more open to saying okay like look at yasmin imagine if her mom morenike says oh you don't do that you cannot go on live tv you are too young to do that that is because that young lady was so amazing as a host i was in awe yeah. right so imagine if she had a parent that didn't nurture that at the end of the day at the end of the day that would have been a talent that has just gone down the drain or if they had said ah you must be a doctor <laughs> you must be a doctor imagine if that was a story you know so i think we are at a place where one of the very important ways to let um younger people get involved in national affairs is make them feel like they matter listen yeah. to them because when you listen to people they feel valuable and they want to add more or they want to become better and make it worth your while to listen to them mm. yeah yeah That's very true um you know just um, in connection, in line with what um, you've both, you know, commented on, like I was saying about some of the ways that we can actually bridge this gap. And is the, I still go back to the communication, how we communicate mm -hmm. with them. First of all, we have to figure out exactly how do we reach them. Yeah. Like you said, you were having a, a, an interaction with your brother and he said, have people like him talk about it. Because they watch themselves talk about different things, things that are very irrelevant, very, but they watch it. They watch TikTok every day. They spend hours. Mm -hmm. They're on Instagram. They're on social media, consuming a lot of information. So when they have information, it's just like during the week, we realized that there was a lot of, you know, they had a lot of their mates and their, you know, uh, people within the same age bracket mm -hmm. call a lot and have a lot of comments and opinions about what they were the topic of discussion. So it means that when they get involved, everybody gets involved. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the rest of the group. So um, I'm not saying it's a ship mentality, but you are able to use one to conquer a lot. Right. So the major thing is for us to look out for ways like this, avenues like this, create opportunities do surveys, find out how best
to reach out to the younger generation. Mm -hmm. Change the news, change the communication pattern. If you know that, how many, of, how many um, people still watch TV? A lot of people have gone online. A lot of people so don't apps. even watch TV anymore. Mm -hmm. All arise, everything is online. So these people are watching TV. So direct them in those environments. Create an avenue for them to feel like you're listening to them. For them to feel like they're whatever they're saying on social media, mm -hmm. their backlashes and everything. Don't just see the bad side of it. The fact that they're abusing the government based on the fact that they're not... Um, they don't feel good with the way the situation of things. Yeah. But tell them some of the things that you are about to do. Bring it to light. Mm -hmm. You don't have to finish all these things and take eight years and then tell us you did one school before you bring it to light at the end of the um, election year or mm -hmm. at the end of the, uh, your term. Mm -hmm. As you're doing things, carry people along. Carry them along. Make them feel like sit down, have... Have youth councils, you know, you know, they have all these youth councils, leadership discussions, sit down in their midst, hear what they have to say, hear some of the ideas that they're going to throw out there because time has passed. Mm -hmm. Technology has changed. Technology has evolved. And a lot of things have evolved. So also partner with the youths, partner with the younger generations. They're the ones that if you look at the technological world. The youths are the ones striving right there. Right. They're yes. the ones creating innovation, bringing out solutions to problems that we never thought we could ever. We thought at, at the best during our time, we thought that the light was going to be one of the best in, uh, inventions. Yeah. But look at it now. <laughs> the, you go to some of these exhibitions and everything, and you see some of the technologies coming out. You see driverless cars. It's, it's already been it's, used uh -huh. in some world. It's hard to keep up. <laughs> so we need to get to the point where we give our generation, uh, the younger generation, an avenue to explore. That is where you know, true innovation actually comes out from. Mm -hmm. So an avenue to express themselves. That is where confidence to even speak comes from. Right. Just let them be a bit more expressive. From there, you learn questions. They have questions. Those questions create some level of, um, of um, what's the word? Um, inquisitiveness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. From there, they research. From there, if there's a solution, they bring it to light. If there's no solution, they start to seek for a solution because they are always looking for an answer to everything. Right. From the littlest things. You have conversation. A lot of parents have even, you've been doing something tirelessly for years and your child just asks you one question. Mommy, have you ever tried doing this, 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 this? I know how many problems I've even helped my parents to solve when it comes to like technology. You have been having an issue for years. And some small child just takes your phone, locks it, then swipes like this, and you just realize, wait, when my screen, when my phone is locked, I can actually still see my pictures. Mm. <laughs> wow. wow. You know, and it was a puzzle for me for a while until I actually told my nephew, here, here's my phone. I locked it and I gave it to him. And I just saw the process. For the first time, I actually saw how to work on my own phone from someone who has never held a phone before. Hmm. So it already tells you that the next couple of generations down the line, they're coming in because of the exposure that they allowed, because of the level at which their brain is allowed to function on. Mm -hmm. And the technological advancement as they're coming in yeah. is almost like they become adults from the tummy. So they're asking questions. The questions we never ask. They're, very they're asking the questions. Asking, so they're yeah. very curious. And that curiosity is what births a lot of innovation, yes. creativity, and what have you. Yes. So we need to get to the point where we listen to them. Not just, I feel like the communication, and another major point is that the communication has to be a two-way street. Two -way. Yeah. So we grew up in a generation whereby the communication was a one-way street. Mm -hmm. It's obedience. That's it. Yes. Yes. You obey or it's not even naughty corner. Now they do naughty corner. <laughs> Came straight. Zaza. Some. Are you will <laughs> be. And you, must, then you will cry and you will come because back. Because I don't to want to hear. Pim. So communication <laughs> has to get to the point where it's a two-way street. You notice that when you have a communication. I have some certain communications with my nephews. Or I hear how my sister has communication with her kids. And I'm like this. I'm in awe. <laughs> because it's like they are like adults. So do you know what you did? They know what they did. Do you know what you did? Yes. Do you know it was wrong? Yes. Tell me what, how you feel. They would express themselves. Maybe they were, there was a miscommunication or they knew that they were wrong, but they thought they could get away with it. They would tell you. Mm -hmm. It tells you that they already know. So all you need to do is to learn how to communicate with them, communicate with them in such a way that at the end of the day, we don't always have to end up with the whip. Yeah. Right. You communicate with this generation now and they come to you and they tell you, I'm sorry, 
-hmm. And they tell you, I'm sorry, I apologize. Mm. They apologize to you eventually, which means that they know they have certain, there are avenues, uh, there are compartments within their system that yep. opens up because of how we communicate with them. So it's very, very important. In my opinion, that is one of the major things that we have to use as a tool mm -hmm. in order to get to the younger generation. Because if mm -hmm. we do not excite them with what is their reality, they keep living a life thinking that everybody's going to go away. Yeah. No, everybody's not going to have the opportunity to go away. All of us didn't have the opportunity. If not, no, there would have been nobody remaining here. Yeah. Right. So we all, a group of us, all have to come together and agree that we're the ones that we stay here and try and make That's that change. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If not, there's nothing for our next generations to come back to. I agree with you, Angie. Right. Like, everything you've said, I agree 100%. Sans, mm -hmm. you have a comment. Um, yes. Oh my goodness. I completely, I was, I was lost. Okay. So, um, we have a message. Good evening, my dear, be beautiful sisters of what are you saying? Hashtag ways. How can we get young people interested in national affairs? There is no too much talk about it. My dear, beautiful sister, Wajiaga made mention of communication, which is very key. Another thing is what information are we making available in the internet? Thirdly, to be aware of what the government is willing to do for the young people and the elderly ones. My dear beautiful sister Jennifer said that people are determined to relocate because staying in the country, they are unable to achieve what they have planned to achieve. And it is, and it is also key. Thank God the show is back fully. So happy and excited to see my dear beautiful sister Jennifer anchoring the show. Nice job, my dear sister. My name is Daniel Ilo, Ways Regular Fan. Thank, Thank you, Daniel. Daniel. Yeah. Thank you. Daniel. Daniel is really he gives the best fan. comments. Top fan. <laughs> like, yeah. We're also a fan. We're also fans. Yeah. yeah. Fan of yeah. you. <laughs> but just to but just to round off, right? Yeah. I'm just backing off with um, what Angie said, right? Yeah, communication is very key, yeah. mm -hmm. and if we are going to communicate, it also means that we need to also implement some of these ideas mm -hmm. that the younger generation are going to bring to the table. Mm -hmm. Because I know sometimes when I was younger, my dad would ask us for our opinion, and guess what? He's not, he's never going to use it, right? He just Why felt does like he, ask for he it? just felt like, my In my question exactly. <laughs> so. If you asked me and I gave you my opinion, why are you not using it? Why did you ask me to begin with? And I've never been comfortable with it, right? I had a conversation with him um, two weeks ago. We had a little clash and he was just talking and I told him, see, the reason why I sit back and I don't see anything these days is because you don't listen, right? right? <laughs> I give you my opinion and I'm so sure, 100% sure it would work mm -hmm. but you don't do it right and at the end of the day you come back to me with the same problem with the same issue i advise you again and you and don't, you don't take do it. it right sometimes you tell me oh you need to be a, you're an adult now blah 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 but another time it's like i'm just like What's guy which way? Which, way? <laughs> part, which way and i feel like that's what's happening with a lot of the gen z's and because yeah. it's a pattern a lot of people don't want to speak up anymore right. so it is very important that they feel heard. Right. They see that their ideas are being implemented. Mm -hmm. Because you know, when you see something and you see someone actually implementing it and it works 100%, mm -hmm. you're proud. Yeah. And you're, 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 you, you are motivated to want to dig deep I'm and do more. Yeah. Right. But yeah, as well... Thank you so much, ladies. Oh, it's such um, a lovely conversation. <laughs> I don't want it to end. <laughs> no, it's been a great week. And yeah. yeah, they've proven to us that there are actually people capable of doing this. They just need to be given the opportunity. That's it. Yeah, we should have one for a full summer. Right? That would be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, thank you so much, Sandy. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you. And I love your smiles today. Thank you. Yeah. thank you. Anyway, before we go, do ensure to follow us on Instagram at Show Africa. You can interact with us for that. Drop a comment. And most importantly, follow all our social media engagements. And remember to like, share, comment, and invite your friends and family to watch us and follow us. If you missed today's quote, here it is again. Never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed people can change the world. Indeed, it is the only thing that I ever has. And this was said by Margaret Mead. See you tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation Monday. to your screen. Bye. Monday.